Quiet, please. Quiet, please. up to here. Oh, well, uh, only four and a half hours more, and then I can go home and have breakfast. No, no, ma'am, I, I don't drink coffee for breakfast. Uh, well, you guess what I drink. No. No. No, you're getting warm. <laughs> sure, three of them. Well, after all, it really isn't breakfast, you see. It's, uh, Supper or dinner, something. Sure. Oh, well, thank you very much for calling. Good morning. Hello. Yes, this is Connie Duffin. Hello, Vic. Say what? No, oh, I haven't got. I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal. You. Yeah, we're not supposed to play it. Ever since about 1934, or five or sometime. No, no kidding. Sure, I'll play you something. Just, just a little while. The other phone's ringing. Well, well stick around. Keep tuned to us, and you shall hear music. It says here. Uh, good morning. Hello, Connie Duffin speaking. And how are you? Well, fine, thanks. Huh? Settle a bet? Well, I'll try. Now is the hour... Well, it's generally sung in 4-4 time here, but it was originally written in 3-4 time. Yeah, that's right. Regular waltz time. Well, so I guess you both win or you both lose or something, huh? Sure, you're welcome. Good morning. Fine. How are you? Uh, yes, ma'am. The theme used on Quiet, Please is taken from the second movement of the Symphony in D minor by Cesar Franck. I'll be glad to play a little bit for you in just a second. Let's see, uh... uh here she is. <laughs> Played by the Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra under Eugene Ormandy. Here you are. Sure, I'm lucky. 
house does. And now I'm all alone in here. No, it's just a little place about as big as two telephone booths, I guess. Uh, no, the engineer's upstairs and master control. Well, we're the only people in the station. No, I guess there's a janitor upstairs in Studio 14. They had a quiz show up there tonight, and it's probably custard pie all over the stage. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, they don't allow me to have visitors. Uh, besides, my wife's listening. Sure. Verna. No, she can't even come down to see me when I'm on the air. Well, well, thanks very much. Sure. Sure. Uh, until 5 o'clock, 5 a.m. Oh, 500, we used to say in the Navy. Well, thanks very much. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, friends, this is your friend Connie Duffin on the 12 to 5 shift to play music and the same words to you. If you can't sleep, call me up and let's talk. We talk to everybody. Night owls, bartenders, policemen, burglars, music lovers. You know the number. Give us a ring. <laughs> now, for a little music, let's see what we have here. It's, uh... Now, the Mills Brothers singing till then. And while they're singing, I'm going to have you a little coffee and a cigarette. So lean back and listen. <laughs> Uh, 
Yes, ma'am, you're right. Well, I'm sorry. Herbie must have been mixed up or something. And thank you very much. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey, where did... Herbie! Where did... This is Connie Duffin. Look here. What kind of nonsense is this? Well, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Making fools out of people. I'm going to sue you. Well, what for, for goodness sake? Are you the man who just said I was shot by a burglar? Huh? Me? Oh, uh... Why, no, sir. That was a man from the newsroom. Well, he's a liar. Listen, friend, who are you? I don't get this. just as much alive as you are. Well, all right, sir, but who are... My name is Hubert W. Crockley. I was not killed by a burglar. You weren't. I mean, what? Do I sound as if I've been shot? Now, look here, young man. I demand a public apology. I... Wait a minute. What? I said, wait a minute. I hear somebody in my bedroom. Well, but... Uh... Okay. Hello, this is Connie Duffin. Who? Oh, sure. Good morning. No, sir, I don't think I do know you. What? Police? No. No, uh, it was a gag. Oh, it couldn't be. I was just talking to Mr. Cronkite on the phone. Well, he's on the phone right now. I'm just waiting for him to come back. Hello, Mr. Cronkite. Hello. Hello, hello, Mr. Cronkite. No. He, he doesn't answer. Well, wait a second. I gotta put on some music. Music, for God's sake, just a radio station. Friends, here is music for you from yours truly, Connie Duffin, to you wherever you are. This is my house. You ran away from me. I had plenty of reason to run away from you. Oh, you did. 
Well, go ahead and get out now. Who do you think you're talking to? I never asked you to come back. Uh, I don't know why I didn't. Well, get out if you don't like it. I will not get out. Stay away from me. Lucy. Get away from me. I say I... Get away <laughs> It's now 2 a.m. Standard time. Huh? Oh, oh I, I must have been asleep. Yeah, I guess you were, Connie. Say, hey, where did you go? Upstairs for a minute. Yeah, you sure got me in a hassle. What do you mean? Ah, oh, talking about that guy getting killed by a burglar. Oh. <laughs> that. And getting the time wrong. Bob put it in the log upstairs. What's his name? will jump down my throat tomorrow. Today. Connie Duffin. Who? The police. What? You did? I don't know. Yes, I'll come in. Sure. Okay. Yep. Listen. He did get killed by a burglar. Well, all right. Huh? That's what I said, didn't I? Well, yeah, but hadn't you better get on the air? Oh. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this is your friend, friends. Connie Duffin and his records. Now a word from our sponsor. Chapel's apples are the finest, most delicious, great big eating apples you ever sunk a fang into. Direct to you from the tree to your table in handsome handmade baskets containing 12, 48, and 96 of the finest eaten and cooking apples you ever laid eyes on. Friend wife will fly at once to the kitchen to concoct a genuine old-fashioned apple pie that'll set your mouth a-watering as it did when Mother made those luscious, spicy pies that you use. You'll tussle with her over Chapel's apples because they're just as good eaten apples as they are pie apples. Just say, Chapel's apples, please. For your neighborhood apple dealer, and accept no substitute. First thing tomorrow, Chapel's apples. And now, music. I can take a gag as big as the next fellow, see? But fun's fun. Well, and what is this? What is what? How did you know that fellow was going to get killed? Look, it's on the paper. Where did that come from? Up in the newsroom. The newsroom? There's nobody in the newsroom. The teletypes are there. They're running. They shouldn't be. Not this time of night. Good morning. Well, they are. And you got that off the teletype? Mm-hmm. How do you know it isn't kidding somebody? It isn't. Yeah, but how do you know? Believe me, Taxi cab accident. It'll happen any minute. You wouldn't be kidding a guy. Not me. You got a union card? Uh, an AFRA card? Yeah. Let's see it. Yeah. Paid up, too. Yep. Hello, this is Connie Duffin. Good, good morning. Herbie Buchanan. Mm-hmm. Herbie Buchanan, I said. What's the matter? Can't you understand English? Yeah, it's just a rude, rude thing. That's the way it's put down in the air. Let us take the mush out of your mouth. Listen, I never had any trouble with people understanding me before. Well, I don't get too much down there with you. That's your responsibility. But if Watson's name is, you're going to He's going to pick your ears back like a snoop. Listen, you... Yeah, listen. This is your program. If I was you, I wouldn't be playing the funeral march this time of the morning. Funeral march? We're playing Gene Krupa's opus number one. No, it isn't, Tony. Let's it. Good 
Tony Duffin speaking. Well, how are you, ma'am? What? No, I just turned it off. Yes, ma'am. Twelve to five. Yeah, only a little while ago now. Oh, you're glad. Well, I'm sorry. Well, man, you have no idea how rugged it is here. For, for some reason, everything is slightly mixed up this morning. No, I have not been drinking. I do not drink on the job. Yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am. What would you like to hear us play? Three o'clock in the morning. Hang on. Here it comes. Listen, ma'am. Was 
instantly killed in an accident this evening when a taxi cab in which he was riding was struck by a streetcar at the corner of Pacific Avenue and Maple Grove.